welcome back to our channel, Friends Till the Book Ends. My name is Lindsay and I am one half of the duo on this channel. And this vlog, um, well, in case you haven't noticed by the title, uh, Danielle and I are giving a go at vlogging. So there will be two separate vlog videos up. One that's my vlogging week, one that's Danielle's vlogging week. So we were kind of going to give it a shot and see, you know, how we liked it, if it was interesting enough. Um, but I kind of wanted to check in with you guys just to give you my reading plans for the next couple of days. Um, it's Super Bowl Sunday currently and it is snowing a lot. We live in Pennsylvania, so we've had a lot of snow recently, like big fat flakes are coming down. I'll show you guys in a bit what that looks like. Um, but it's the perfect day to get some reading done. And my reading plans, the first one that I have is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. Uh, this is a book that I've had since like November and I just haven't gotten around to it despite all of the hype and um, it's something that I think I'm gonna adore. So essentially I think we're following our main character named Brie whose mother dies in an accident and she's kind of feeling like she needs to get away. So she gets accepted into this like pr college prep program at UNC Chapel Hill and she witnesses some sort of like magical attack and then from there she discovers like a secret society and I've heard that this is a King Arthur retelling uh, which haven't usually been my favorite retelling so I'm really interested to see how I feel about this. I mean the cover's stunning and I actually haven't heard like anything bad about it so I'm really hoping that this book lives up to the hype. And then the other book that I am planning on reading is Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia and um, this is a book that I just got from Book of the Month and first of all, cover, stunning. This is like the, the vlog of stunning covers because between both of these, I'm like, you can't go wrong. Um, but I have been interested in this book since it came out, but Reagan from Peru's Project recently read it and she really liked it. So this kind of kind of gave me the kick that I needed to pick it up for the first time. Um, but I believe we're set in the jazz age and um, in Mexico, which is cool because I haven't really read a lot of books set in Mexico. And I believe that has to do with um, the Mayan god of death. He is like trapped and this girl accidentally releases him and then they go on some sort of journey together. Um, so I don't know, but it sounds really interesting. So those are my plans today. I will kind of check in later when I've done some reading, see how I'm feeling. Um, I'm Oh, I'm also listening to The Young Elites by Marie Lu on audiobook. I'm currently about 30% into it. Um, it's okay so far. I recently read Sky Hunter by her and I, chef's kiss, loved it. So I was like, I want to get to her backlist. Um, and The Young Elites was kind of the one that jumped out to me as something that I would be most interested in. Um, so far, it's like, okay, I'm not obsessed with it yet. I think that, you know, I'm not a huge fan of uh, Adelina, the main character thus far, and I'm kind of not really understanding this like society thing that's going on, but that's okay. You know, we're only 30% in, so I'm hoping that the book picks up. So I will check in later when I've got some reading done. Um, I'll show you the snow outside and yeah, so I will see you guys in a bit. Okay. Hi guys. So, um, I have read up until part one. Nope. I have read up until part two in Legendborn, which is the first uh, about like 87-ish pages. Um, so I can kind of give a better idea of like what we're dealing with here. So essentially, like I said, we're following our main character, Brie, whose mother died and what the police uh, say is an accident. And she has already been accepted into this college program, but her mother was very adamant about her not going because she also went to UNC Chapel Hill and there's some like weird history there. We're not sure what it is yet, but her mom's not really a fan of her going. And so the last thing that Brie and her mother, you know, talk about is that they have an argument about her going to this like early acceptance college prep thing. And then her mother dies. So Brie is really harboring a lot of guilt and anger. And you can tell she's kind of just an angry person in this, this first part of the book, which she has every right to be. Um, and so we open up with her and her friend Alice, who are both at UNC Chapel Hill, they're at the program. So far we've seen her encounter magical beings, uh, get in trouble with the Dean, and be forced to have a peer mentor. And the whole time that this is happening, uh, Brie is sure that there's something kind of supernatural, something, something else is going on here. So she starts kind of sneaking around and she uncovers a secret society and basically she kind of forces her way into it. Um, so, so far we've been introduced to Brie, her friend Alice, 
Um, and also the two main boy characters that I think are going to play some sort of like love interest role. One is Selwyn or Sel. He's like your t stereotypical bad boy kind of type. Um, and then you have Nick, who's like the golden boy. Um, so we'll see where that goes from there. But now, you know, 87 pages in, I'm still a little confused on the Arthurian legend retelling thing. Like they've mentioned Merlins and mages and magic and things like that, but it's hasn't been quite as direct of a retelling as I was expecting, which is fine. Um, but I'm a little confused on, I guess, what's going on. I'm enjoying it, but I'm not entirely sure that I can like fully be in the know about what's happening right now. So once I'm past part two or, you know, halfway through or something like that, I'll check in again and see how my feelings have changed. See you guys in a bit. Okay, so it's Super Bowl Sunday. So we are here making Italian hoagies. So we went to our local deli, our Italian deli. We got provolone and sweet capicola and serrano ham. We've got lettuce, tomatoes, onions, rolls. So we are about to make a sandwich extraordinaire. Okay guys, here's my final result. It is chef's kiss scrum diddly umptious. So let's go watch the football game that I don't really care about. Hey guys, so I just wanted to check in with you guys now that I have finished part two of Legendborn. Oops, it's backwards. And now that I finished part two of Legendborn. So I've read 227 pages of it so far. So I just kind of wanted to hop on and give you guys my thoughts. I'm liking it. Um, I think that the King Arthur aspects of it have really come through the last, um, you know, part or so. Uh, I'm not a huge fan. There's a romance happening, but it's not my favorite thus far. I feel like it happened really fast. And yeah, so it's okay so far. I'm, I'm liking it. I'm not loving it, but I am liking it. So I'm kind of intrigued to see where the author is going to go with it. Um, I'm sure we're gearing up for a big battle scene and that's kind of stuff that I like to see in my fantasies. So here's hoping that we're seeing that in the upcoming a uh, couple chapters. So I think I'm going to take a break from Legendborn and I'm going to go ahead and start on Gods of Jade and Shadow because um, I just have read too much of Legendborn today and I think I just kind of need a break. So I'm going to go ahead and start Gods of Jade and Shadow and this is probably that this is it for Sunday night because well, I have work tomorrow morning and yeah I'm gonna need to go to bed soon probably so I will check in with you guys tomorrow when I have read some of Gods of Jade and Shadow and um, listen to more of The Young Elites by Marie Lu and so yeah I'll see you guys tomorrow hey guys so I wanted to hop on and show you guys the most stunning book that I got today so I ordered this Lit Joy Crate exclusive edition of Pride and Prejudice because it's my favorite book of all time. I'm obsessed with it. Um, so I kind of wanted to show you guys the most stunning edition I've ever seen. So it comes in like this really beautiful slip case. And then here is the book itself. I mean, <laughs> look at the perfection. That is Darcy and Elizabeth. And the artwork is stunning. It's got the gilded edges. Um, I believe that's Pemberley on the back. And then throughout, which is might be my favorite part, well, there's cute quotes on the end pages. There are illustrations throughout the book. I mean, what? What? Obsessed. So, um, like I said, this is from Lit Joy Crate. And it had been out of stock for a really long time, but it finally came back in stock. And I just had to bite the bullet and buy it because I love Pride and Prejudice. It's my favorite book. I have a couple bind up editions of Jane Austen's books um, as well as a couple paperbacks of Pride and Prejudice, but I've never seen an edition like this. And the collector in me had to have it. So I'm going to go get out of my teacher clothes and I will give you an update on the reading I got done today. Okay, so let's chat about some reading updates. So the last time I talked to you last night, it's now Tuesday or it's Monday. I have no idea what day of the week it is. It's Monday at four. Um, last night I was starting God's Subject and Shadow and I was actually able to finish it today. Um, so I am a teacher, but I am currently the building sub for a school district. I had been long-term subbing, but the person I was subbing for came back which means that I kind of have some free time on my hands 
So I get a lot of really great reading done. So I was able to finish Gods of Jade and Shadow today, but it's not that long. It's actually only about 330-ish pages, which is really short for like a fantasy novel. Um, so to give you a better synopsis of what this book was about, we were following a girl whose name is Cassio Cassiopeia, terrible at names, Cassiopeia. And um, she is kind of like seen as an outsider in her family because her mother had married a man that her father was not about. So when her father dies, Cassiopeia and her mother are forced to kind of crawl back to their grandfather who is kind of like scum of the earth. So she is basically the servant in her grandfather's household and her grandfather has this locked crate that he keeps in his room. He only has a key around his neck um, except for the rare times that he takes it off. So one day uh, Cassiopeia after uh, you know a triggering incident she decides that screw it she's gonna open the crate and inside is a bunch of bones and when she um, opens it she accidentally gets a shard of the bone kind of stuck in her palm and that blood kind of brings the Mayan death god back to life. His name is Hunkami um, and then he kind of is like you're gonna come with me and we're gonna reclaim my throne in Zibaba, which is like the underworld. And she kind of goes along with it. And so the whole book is them completing these different tasks because he has to get different parts of himself back in order to kind of be able to reclaim his throne from his treacherous brother, who was the one who put him in the um, box to begin with. So I liked a lot of things about this book. Um, I loved that it was really rooted in Mayan and Mexican folklore. I love that it was set in the jazz ages in 1927, I believe, in Mexico, which is really cool because I really haven't had the opportunity to read a lot of books in that kind of setting. So I was a huge fan of that. And I really liked the evolution of Cassiopeia and Hunkame's relationship because at first, like, Hunkame, like, he's a god. So he's like, you mortals. Like, he doesn't really, um, he's not mean by any, by any sorts of the word, but he's very disconnected. But the longer that he is on the mortal plane and the longer that Cassiopeia is helping him, um, he kind of takes on mortal traits. So that's kind of why there's like a time limit on how long they can like work together because he will eventually either turn completely mortal or he will drain Cassiopeia of her life force. So um, I really liked those traits of mortality that we saw. Um, I think I'm going to give this book a four and a half, four point five 4.5 rating. It wasn't the best book I've ever read, but it was really good. It was really sh like fast. Like I read this essentially in like a day. Um, and I, I'm really excited to pick up Mexican Gothic, which I have somewhere on my shelf. Um, it's somewhere. I have it. I'm not sure where it is, but I do own it. And this made me really excited to pick up that book because that book is definitely more well known than this one but yeah I really liked it I didn't give it a full five because um I thought the ending kind of wrapped up really fast and I thought it could have used you know another 50 or so pages and I yeah that was kind of the only reason why I didn't get a full five stars but if you were thinking about reading this I would highly recommend picking it up because it was chef's kiss fabulous how many times can I say chef's kiss in a video the answer is a limited. The limit does not exist if you're a Mean Girls fan. Um, so yeah, I didn't make any progress on Legendborn yet. I have listened to another like 10-15% of The Young Elites by Marie Lu and I'm still not loving it. I don't know, there's just something about the, the main character where I just feel like she makes really dumb choices. Like there's this, I'm trying not to give away spoilers, but instead of like asking for help she kind of tries to like go it alone and you know she's kind of put in this like weird situation where it would be best to just tell the truth but she doesn't and it just creates these problems for her so I don't know I'm not a huge fan of it thus far I will finish it it's really it's a short audiobook I think it's like 10 hours long which is pretty short so I will be doing that I will probably read more of Legend Board tonight um I'm not sure what the next read that I pick up is I'm thinking either um, The Hate You Give or what else do I have over there? A Court of Wings and Ruin or Throne of Glass. 
So I will let you know when I choose. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys in the next update. Hi, hello. So some updates from the last time that I checked in. Uh, I finished <laughs> Legendborn. Uh, this book blew my mind. I wasn't so sure from the first like 45% of what I read. I was kind of like, it's good. Uh, it was interesting, but I did pick it. I did put it down for a whole day and not pick it up, which isn't like me. Um, so I think that just kind of shows that the book was a little slow, slow on the go. She was really setting up for the second half, which was wild. When I finished this book, can I tell you, my heart was like beating out of my chest. So I was just like sitting there, like with my heart giving me palpitations. So um, yeah, I ended up giving this a five out of five stars. And something that I think the author just did really, really well is kind of discussion based around class and race and gender. And um, so our main character, Brie, is black and she's going to UNC Chapel Hill, which is a historically white school and or majority white school and it's set in the south so there is a legacy of the confederacy and slavery and um trauma that black people experienced at the hands of white people and we see this come up a lot um within this book in in a very interesting and different way that i've never seen it portrayed before perhaps it's because this book is so different to anything that i've ever read before i thought this book was really really unique so um, you know, Brie is constantly being faced with all these different types of microaggressions, um, and not so microaggressions. Sometimes people are just like blatantly rude, um, and, uh, making assumptions about her based on her race or her gender or her class. So, um, I think that the author did a really good job also at exploring the themes of like intergenerational trauma because, um, I don't want to spoil anything, but we, Brie ends up kind of reconnecting with some ancestral situations and it becomes an integral part of the story and just the exploration of that trauma that uh, goes back multiple generations I thought was really really well done and it was really thought-provoking so you know while this book is very heavily rooted in like fantasy and fantasy world it also is, is firmly grounded in the legacy that uh, you know white people left and not not a good way so um very good very good very good um highly recommend if you were thinking about picking it up it was sensational so the other book that i want to chat about real fast that i finished was the young elites by marie lu um mixed feelings here once again i don't think i ever explained to you what this book was about but essentially we are following a girl named adelina and when she was a little girl, there was a sickness that swept through the lands and it left people scarred with um, markings on them as well as hidden powers. And they're called Malfettos, these people. And Adelina is one of them. And so Malfettos are basically treated like a plague upon society. So people are out to kill them, they're out to get them. And we start the story with Adelina escaping her home and going to a city where she's joining this very, they're the young elites. It's an elite group of people who have powers who are trying to essentially take down the king. And um, it's an interesting setup. I really love how Marie Lu is able to like craft a world that really sucks you in. And I thought that the powers that each of the characters had were, were pretty unique. Uh, well, some of them were like fire or like wind or animal talking. Uh, but there was like, you know, I don't, I don't want to give Adelina away, but she's a very interesting power as well as a couple other people have some things that I haven't really seen in, you know, YA fantasy books before. So I thought that was really cool. Um, where I have a problem is the characters. Um, I didn't like any of them, uh, which is kind of insane to say, considering I finished it and I'm considering picking up the second book. But Adelina was so unlikable as the main character. I think you're supposed to feel bad for her. And in some aspects I do. Like she had a really traumatic childhood and her father was really mean to her and abusive. And, um, you know, she's feeling like she's been used her whole life and nobody's actually like seen her. But at the same time, like she makes the worst decisions and then gets upset when people get mad at her for those decisions. And um, 
there's also a romance between her and another character that's so unbelievable. Like, we get no development there. Like, they are introduced, and then they have, like, minimal interaction, and then they're, like, their hearts are bonded kind of shit. And I'm just, like, when did that, that happen off camera? Uh, because it just was, it just didn't really make sense to me. It was put in there for a, a reason. Like, I see why Marie Lou did it, but it just wasn't believable to me. And, uh, the ending was interesting, kind of, so we'll see if I pick it up. I think I'm probably going to give it just a three stars because it wasn't anything special. Um, but I need to figure out what I'm reading next. I have quite the long TBR list that I need to get to. Um, but... So I will come back when I pick an audiobook and two physical books. That's typically how much I read at one time. Um, I'm always having an audiobook and always at least one physical, if not two physical books. That's just the way that I read. I need to pick the books I'm reading next. It is also time for a nap. Um, so I will check in with you guys later. So I got a package in the mail today from Amazon. And you might be thinking, Lindsay, what? Did you order that required a box so wholly massive? Um, it was books, but I didn't order that many books. There was <laughs> three books in this container. Three, I said. So yeah, I'm Amazon really be like wasting some packaging here, man. Okay, so I've decided what I'm going to read next. Um, so I have volume six of Saga hanging around. So I thought I would pick this one up for a kind of quick, easy read. And I need to continue on in the series anyway. So I'm going to read this tonight. And then I'm going to get a start on Shipped by Angie Hockman. And I have heard this is kind of like the hating game. It was pitched to me as that. Um, and The Hating Game is one of my favorite hate-to-love romances of all time. Um, but essentially, I think we are following a girl who, she's up for promotion, but her kind of bane of her existence, his name's Graham, he's also up for the position. And um, they, their boss basically makes each of them draft a proposal on boosting bookings for the Galapagos. And they have to go on a company cruise to the Galapagos Islands together. So they, they've they actually never met in person. They basically just have like this online battle. But they have to meet. And I think that they're going to, you know, well, obviously it's a romance. They're going to fall in love. Um, so that is on the agenda for tonight. I also plan on watching some cold case files because I have been in a true crime mood. So that is on the plan for tonight. I will update you guys tomorrow. Alright, so now that I have my makeup on for the day, my hair is braided, we are good to go, um, I wanted to chat through some books. So, I finished this. Um, I It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday afternoon. I started this last night. I read like 80% of it and then I finished the last like 20% this morning. And I really liked this book. I haven't heard too many people chat about it yet. I think it just came out. Yeah, 20, January 2021. So it's been out for like a month. Um, but this was really, really cute. So like I said before, we're kind of following our girl. Her name's Henley. And she is working as like a digital marketing person for this uh, cruise company. And she has this like one-sided hate relationship with her coworker named Graham who works remotely. So they've never met. But they're both up for the same promotion. So they are, their boss kind of forces them to go on a cruise together to the Galapagos Islands because they need to come up with a really clever digital marketing campaign and whoever's idea is the best will get the promotion. And uh, it was just really cute. I loved Graham. He was such a sweet little Cinnabon. And I thought the uh, island setting of the Galapagos is really interesting. I've never read a book set there. And I also liked the sister relationship that we saw because Henley's sister Walsh um, comes along on the cruise because she's kind of dealing with some some stuff in her personal life and I thought it just was really I thought it was really well done I gave it a four out of five stars um, why I didn't get a full five stars from me is that um, our main character Henley 
Uh, she's just, like, really mean to Graham from the get-go for literally no reason. Like, he's like, what did I do to make you hate me? And she's like, you know. And he's like, no, I don't. Um, so she just has this, like, one-sided weird grudge thing happening. And she also, like, they'll have a cute, sweet moment. And then she'll do something and is, like, rude and mean and then walks off. And then she'll, like, reflect on her behavior. And then she's like, that was kind of mean. And then she'll go back and be like, I'm sorry. Uh, you still like me. And then he always, like, takes it back. That happened, like, three or four times in this short ass book so that was like it didn't get a full five stars because it was just kind of annoying that she kept acting like a jerk and then being like oh sorry um so didn't love that also the ending was like a little too on the nose like wrapped up in a pretty bow kind of thing i mean it's a romance you you think you know things are gonna work out so it was good it was really cute if you were thinking about recommend uh, reading it i would it's a cute valentine's day romance um, also really cute summer romance so that was fun 10 out of 10 recommend um what else I have decided that the next book that I'm going to pick up is A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Mass and this is the third book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series and I've actually never read this so I read the first book like four times I've read the second book I think two or three times and I just never got around to reading this something about it I don't know I'm not sure if I'm gonna like it I don't know why I have literally no basis for the feeling of dread <laughs> that encompasses me when I look at this book I don't I don't know what my deal is but I just need to finish reading it so that I can read this uh fourth book in the series that just is coming out um at the end of the month of February so I need to kick it into gear and, and get over it I won't go through the synopsis of this because y'all already know it um, for my audiobook, uh, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, the very first Percy Jackson book is available at my library, or it was available to me. I had it on hold. Um, so that's going to be the audiobook that I tackle next. Um, I love Percy Jackson. I read, I think, the first, like, two or three books growing up, and then I've seen the movie a whole bunch of times. Logan Lerman always has a place in my heart. Um, but... I never finished the series and I recently read The Trials of Apollo series by Rick Riordan and I really loved it. So um, I kind of wanted to go back to the start and, and, and move from there. And then the other book that I'm going to read is this extremely beat up copy of The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie, um, which is I believe the first law, the first book in the first law trilogy. Um, literally the library says like, oh, book in poor condition as of... 2020 and I was like you don't say it's like literally being held together by tape um so I'm going to read this one next uh because books with Emily uh, Emily Fox who is one of my favorite booktubers uh that's our her book club pick her patreon book club pick and I'm part of it so I wanted to go ahead and pick it up and read it I know actually nothing about what this is about um so we've got a bunch of it looks like we've got like a cast of characters I can't even read the back it's so beat up uh, I guess this is going to be a book that I'm going to go in blind. Um, it just says, murderous conspiracies rise to the surface. Old scores are ready to be settled, and the line between hero and villain is sharp enough to draw blood. Unpredictable, compelling, wickedly funny, and packed with unforgettable characters. So, we shall see. Um, she's kind of, you know, uh, she's about 500 pages, but she's kind of a big book. So, we'll see how I go for that. Um... So yeah, so I will take you on me with my journey today. So I don't work on Wednesdays. Uh, my district has, uh, my school district has like a Wednesdays off kind of thing. So I have to go to the library to pick up some books that are awaiting me. I need to go to Target to return shoes because I bought these really cute boots. But your girl has wide ass feet. So you can't try them on in store. So I came home and I tried them on and I was like, oh, no, this isn't going to work. So I need to return them. And then I need to go to Barnes and Nobles where I'm gonna try not to blow all my money, but I wanted to pick up a book or two and I need new bookmarks because all of my bookmarks have been like unraveling. I don't know what the deal is, but it's, it's making me mad. So I need to do that. And then Starbucks somewhere along the way um, because my friend Krista recommended this delicious drink that I really wanna try out. Um, the other thing is that today um, as I'm filming this, there is a new documentary that dropped on Netflix called Crime Scene, The Vanishing at the Cecil Hotel, which I have been binging. I have about um, 40 minutes left in the last episode. It's a four-part kind of documentary series. 
and it's all about the disappearance of Elisa Lamb. You guys like true crime, if you're interested in any of that stuff, um, this is really fascinating. So if you don't know the case of Lisa Lamb, essentially she was a 21 year old Vancouver um, student who had decided to take a trip to LA in 2013. And she was staying at the infamous Cecil Hotel, which is kind of like, uh, like they call it like the murder hotel in Los Angeles. Um, but it's just essentially located in, in, a, in an unfortunately kind of rough area. And there had been a lot of deaths that occurred there and she disappeared. And um, 19 days later, her body was found in the water tank on the roof at the top of the hotel. And there's been a lot of speculation about like, is this foul play? Did she put herself in there? Um, was it a suicide? Was it an accidental drowning? And there's been literally zero conclusive evidence to support anything. So this documentary just kind of goes into like what possibly happened. And they do get a little uh, conspiracy theory for my liking. So my personal opinion is that she either was having a manic episode because she was bipolar and it was found that she wasn't taking the full dosage of her medication. So I think there's a possibility that she had a manic episode and just kind of like wasn't fully aware of what was happening and what she was doing and she accidentally died or there was foul play involved. That one's less likely in my opinion because uh, there's no evidence whatsoever to support well anything but they go into conspiracy theories about the Canadian government tuberculosis uh, because there was a tuberculosis outbreak during that time and weirdly enough the um, the test that you give people to determine whether or not they have tuberculosis is called the lamb Elisa which is just her name backwards so that's freaking weird um, I think it's just a coincidence, but also at the same time, you're like, but could there be some weird larger conspiracy theory happening? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the answers. Uh, but it was a really interesting documentary. Um, so if, if you were like looking at it or not aware that it was up, it's up. So give it a go. So yeah, so I will take you guys along with me today. So I will check in later once I am done my errand. So see you then. Okay, I'm at the motherland that is Target right now, but I wanted to quickly show you guys the books that I picked up from the library. So the first one is The Ruthless Lady's Guide to Wizardry, and this is brand new. Um, and I think it's about a girl who's a con artist. She's a thief, and she also is a wizard. And I believe that it is LGBTQ rap, so we love that. And then I also picked up Remote Control by uh, Nettie o Ora, um or four. I, I don't know. I want to say um, something else every time, but it's a core four. Um, it's a short science fiction novella. This is also new. Everything that I picked up is new. I've gotten into the good habit of pre-ordering books from the library. So um, uh, cool cover. I don't know what it's about. I know it's a science fiction novella, so I have that to look forward to. And then the last book that I grabbed from the library today is A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kemmer. And this is the last book in the series. What is this series called? The Curse Breaker series. Um, and I just did a reread of the first and second books. So I am fresh. I am ready for this book. But yeah. Okay. So let's go into Target, return my uh, two narrow shoes and go to Starbucks as I need to get gas. So it's just a very um, errand filled kind of day. All right, so if you were looking for a real extra coffee order, um, I get a venti cold brew with the vanilla sweet cream foam, uh, three pumps of toffee nut syrup, light cream, two pumps of white mocha, and a double shot, and it creates this delightful masterpiece. This is all thanks to my friend Krista, who showed me this. I think it's from TikTok, and it is worth the <laughs> $7 that I paid for it.
let's assess the damage. If you hear any weird noises, it would be my dog, Otis. <laughs> who is the cutest. He's 14 and it's time for his W-A-O-K. We can't say the word because he knows it. So he is um, insufferable. But I wanted to quickly show you what I got at the good old Barnes of Nobles. So things. So firstly, I got two bookmarks. Um, I already have this bookmark, but the little tassel like completely unraveled. And there's no point in having a bookmark without the damn tassel. So I'm replacing. And then I saw this one there and it was really pretty. It's a dragon and it's got a little bead. I don't know. It looked cool. Um, so I picked up A Study in Scarlet by Arthur Conan Doyle. So this is a Sherlock Holmes book. And um, I've never read a Sherlock Holmes book. It's really short. It's the first one, I believe, in like the whole Sherlock Holmes situation. So I wanted to pick it up and I really like this cover. Then I did the buy one get one fifty percent off because I always like to see what they've got going on. So the first one I got is The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. And I read um, The Secret History this past year and I freaking loved it. Like, don't get me wrong. It was the most pretentious book I've ever read in my life. But also I was low-key really obsessed with it. And I don't know anything about this book. Um, I think it's about a dude who, um, like a little kid who survives an accident. And... Perhaps, I thought there was a cult involved, but someone told me there wasn't. So I actually really don't know what that one's about. And then this one's Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson, which is one that I've had my eye on for a bit. And it's essentially about an author who writes books or something. And there's a murderer who is replicating each of the murders, like what he considers to be the most perfect murders. So um, yeah, I thought that one sounded really interesting. Otis is very interested. Please do not lick my books. Thank you, sir. So, yes. So, I will take him on his W-A-L-K soon. You will see him in his sweater. Please stop licking my books. I just paid good money for that. Thank you, Otis, for your contribution. All right. So, I will show you guys him in his sweater in a bit. And we will go. Hey, Otis. Do you want to go for a walk? Do you want to go for a walk? What? Where are we going, bud? <laughs> Let's go for a walk. Yeah? Come on. Let's show him your sweater. sometimes comes in here he is he's very weird um and he runs in and he gets a little weird <laughs> a pleasure to see you sir so it's nice and snowy out today if you hear anything that's my neighbors with their um many machineries but look how nice it is out here so pretty. We always have our little bird feeder outside with all of our little chubby birdies. And yeah, we had a snow day today for work or a remote learning day, even though it didn't really snow, but that's okay. I'll take it. Hi everybody. Okay. So update on my reading. I have finally finished Saga Volume 6. Um, it took me forever to get through. Um, well, actually it didn't take that long to read it. I just took forever to actually pick it up. Um, I didn't read anything yesterday and this is the only thing that I've read today, even though I had plenty of ample time, just didn't really feel like reading. Um, I have, well, I didn't feel like physically reading, I should say. I have listened to about 20% of Percy Jackson, um, and The Lightning Thief and it's cute. I forgot that the book is very different than the movie. Um, 
So it's similar, like obviously like the big talking points are the same, but there's a lot of differences. Um, and so it's kind of almost new in a way to me. So I am really enjoying that. I haven't started on The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. I keep it next to me just in case I feel like picking it up, but thus far I have not really felt inclined. Um, so yeah, kind of a lame day for me. Um, tomorrow is Friday and so that'll be my last day of vlogging, so hopefully I can get uh, some reading done. So I will check in with you guys then. Bye! Uh, sorry I look like a toad. I was at the gym and then I was walking my dog and it's so cold out. It's like 25 degrees today where I live. So I'm very pink. Um, but I just wanted to quickly wrap up the vlog. Um, this was the first vlog that I've ever done that we've ever done on our channel. So let us know if you liked it, if you were like too much talking. Um, but I also just wanted to quickly recap what I read. So... Legend Born by Tracy Dion was a five star for me. And then Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia is a four and a half star. Then Shipped by Angie Hockman is a four star. And then uh, Saga Volume Six is also a four star. I think I forgot to mention that last night. And then The Young Elites by Marie Lu was a three star. Now, I didn't start <laughs> the blade itself. Um, Something about it. I don't know if I'm really in the mood for it right now. I've been trying to force myself to read it, but I don't think I don't think that's happening. So, um, yeah, I don't I don't know if we're gonna get to that right the second. But as far as what I plan to read for the weekend, I will be reading hopefully half of this. That's my goal by the end of the by the end of Sunday actually, because we have off on Monday because it's President's Day, um, which is a silly holiday in my humble opinion. Um, I will be reading probably, hopefully, at least half of A Court of Wings and Ruin. If I start the bleed itself, then I start it, um, but no promises. And then I also plan to read Heartstopper Volume 2 on Valentine's Day because this is the most delightful, lovely, cute story I've ever read in my life. So I want to read the second volume because it's been almost a year since I read the first one. And I've been remiss on picking up the second one. And then the last book that I hopefully will pick up this weekend is Pride by Ibi Zavoy. It's really short. It's about a little under 300 pages. And the font is like pretty big. So I'm hoping that uh, we can, that I can read this this weekend. And you know, it's another, it's a Pride and Prejudice retelling. So it'd be really cute for Valentine's Day. So this is kind of my plan for now. Um, I'm not sure when I will be picking up the blade itself. Like I said, it's just not tickling my fancy, but hopefully soon. So thank you for watching this video and I hope you have a good rest of your week and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.